Hello, thank you for joining me for another episode of Festo's Garage. Today we're going to be talking about refurbishing hybrid battery packs, specifically the hybrid battery packs that are found in second and third generation Toyota Priuses. Now, I've done a bunch of these and I know what settings work and I know what process works. And I'm going to share all that information with you today. I'm going to show you what charger to buy, I'm going to show you what settings to use in that charger, how to connect everything, and how to know if a cell is able to be refurbished or not. So you may have to buy some new cells, you may not. It all depends on what your numbers and your charger tell you. Now, first, let's get into the type of charger that I'm using. This is a CQ3 battery charger. Other chargers will do the same thing as long as you can do the same settings. But this is a four-channel unit from the EV Peak Corporation, and I find that these work great. I have two of them, so I can charge up to eight cells at a time. Now, the Toyota Prius battery of these years has 28 cells in it. And if you've only got a charger that does one channel, this is going to take you a little while, okay? So just know that this is a process that has to be done to be able to bring a cell back and make it good again or to determine if the cell is no good and needs to be replaced. Let's take a look at how to set up the charger to do this refurbishing process. The charger will maintain the settings that you used last. So being that I've already done this job before on some other cells, I should be able to go through here and show you the settings that I used. Let's first do the user settings. And we change through that by going to mode until we get to user settings and we hit enter. Pre-charge time is turned off. Our wait time between charge and discharge is set at five minutes. Our sensitivity delta peak is set at default. Temperature cutoff is turned on and we have it at 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. The safety timer is turned on at 720 minutes. The capacity cutoff is turned on at 7500 milliamps. Once we've set everything up, we can go back to mode and we want to go to the nickel metal hydride battery, which is right there. The settings we have for this are right here. This is the main cycle that we're going to use to run. It's a nickel metal hydride cycle, discharge, charge. We're going to charge at 3 amps, we're going to discharge at 1 amp, and we're going to do this three times. Each individual setting is here. So the manual charge current is 3 amps. The automatic charge current limit is 3 amps. The discharge is 1 amp and 6 volts. So now that we're back at our screen, that has the cycle. Discharge, charge, 3 amps, 1 amp, and 3. Now, if I want to be able to change any of this, I can hit this Start Enter button, and whatever I want to change will flash, and I can change that. See, that's charge and discharge. But I want to definitely do discharge first and then charge. So we'll go to the next thing. We can change these whenever we want, if we need to. I always use the same settings, the 3 amps for the charge, the 1 amp for the discharge. And I either run 3 cycles or 5 cycles. Alright, so now, let me show you the leads that I use. These are alligator clips on one end to clip to the battery, and banana plugs on the other end. And you're going to need, if you're using this charger, four sets of these, okay? One for each battery that you're doing. One for each channel of the charger. I'm going to plug my banana plugs into the charger. Red is for positive. Black is for negative. Here are the batteries out of a high voltage pack. If you don't know how to remove these and get to this point, you can check out one of my other videos or some of the other videos online. And it's not too bad. Leave these bars on the top and bottom and these end caps in place because... When you're doing this refurbishing process, it's going to be charging and discharging the battery, which is going to create heat, and it's going to cause the battery to expand. Without being held in this case, you cause the risk of the battery blowing up, or at least leaking, expanding and leaking and, and causing the battery to no longer be good. So if you want this process to work, you definitely got to leave these batteries under some compression. To keep track of what's going on with the batteries, which ones are good, which ones are bad, what I like to do is take a piece of notebook paper and I label down 1 through 28. Then I come in here with my marker and I label each one of these cells. Now I'm going to grab the cords from my charger and I'm going to connect them. So I put the black on negative and the red on positive. 
Now these are done in series, so every other one is going to be another positive. All right, and then in between are the negatives. Now you don't want to do two cells that are right next to each other, okay? Because you want to try to spread that heat out a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to skip and go to the next one down. And I'll know that I didn't miss any because I'll be able to check on my piece of paper. For those of you that have a single charger, you'll just be doing one of these cells at a time. For one that bought the same charger I got, you'll be doing these four. And for people like myself who have two of the chargers, you'll be doing eight. With my wires connected to my batteries, I can go ahead and start the process. So I'll hold this down. And now we're up and running. We're in charging mode, and I want to show you the expansion here. You see the gap between these two cells? This cell that I'm charging on is actually expanding, trying to expand in there, and it's making this gap wider than it is in any of these other cells, you see? And this one's the same way. That's why you want to spread them out. If you had two of these next to each other, they would put a lot of pressure on the pack. You can see this one reading delay, and that's because it was at that little wait time between the charge and discharge and once it's done and it counted to that five minutes it went back to the next cycle where it's doing discharge the chargers finished our first battery it had a little thing flashing here that said end and that means that it's gone through all three of the cycles but it never reached the capacity that uh 7500 milliamps so i hit this mode button and it gives me these numbers and what this means is discharge milliamps and charge milliamps so for our discharge on the first cycle, we have 645 milliamps, and we have 2309 for the charge. Um, those aren't real good numbers. What we'd like to see on this bottom number is 7500, and on this top number, we want to see at least 5000, okay? So 5000 is my bottom line goal for this discharge thing. All right, that same battery, number 20, is done again. As you can see, it's flashing to end. All right, let's just talk about our load numbers here. The very first time we ran number 20, it was 645, then 1076, and then 1086. Now we have a 1070, a 1126, a 1109, a 1121, and a 1106 again. So it looks like this battery is not really gaining anything. And that's been run now eight cycles. What am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and run it another set of five cycles and see what happens. All right, number 20 is finished again. Now let's go over what we've done with number 20 and see if this cell is getting better or not. So I first ran three cycles where I had a 645, a 1076, and a 1086 for my discharge numbers. This is the number I'm trying to get to go to 5,000. So those first three didn't look too promising, so I changed my cycles to run five cycles, and I ran those. And I have a 1070, an 1120, 1109, 1121, and an 1106. I just ran it for another five cycles, and I get a 900, 1093, 1108, 1017, and a 1092. This low number, the discharge number, has not gone up very much and is still around where it started 13 cycles ago. That's telling me that this battery is not making a recovery and I'm going to need to replace it. Alright, you'll see here that this cell is flashing kappa, which means capacity. So let's see what our readings are. Well, on the first cycle this time, it got to its capacity. And it's at 4883 for its discharge number. So this is not to 5,000 yet. So we're going to run it again. It's not going to have any more numbers because it's already met its capacity. So let's watch. It's first cycle. Now for the second cycle and every other cycle out after, it's got zeros because it never ran any more besides this one because it met that capacity. We're going to run it again. And we're going to see what happens. Battery that had a capacity last time also has a capacity this time. And we've got 5097-7338. So that was not the cycle that did the capacity because you can see it hasn't met the 7500. But 
we've gotten to over 5,000, which is what we want. So let's make sure that the next cycle looks good. All right, 51.95 and 7,500. So this battery is done and it's good because it has this 51.95, which is more than 5,000. So we're gonna label this one as good and move on to a new cell. All right, we have another battery that has ended. It's number 16. Now we can see our first value, the low number, the discharge, is 2809. And that's on our first cycle. So let's check the second cycle and see if it goes up or down. Oh, it went up. That's a good sign. So on our second cycle, for the discharge, we have 4086. So let's see what we get on this next third cycle. Ah, cycle number three, the discharge, 4142. So it's still heading up on this uh, numbers. That's a good sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to run Just it again. some more cycles on it. Let's we'll see how they come out. All right, the 4143, that actually went up from the last one. 4347, still going up. 4408. So that's great. It's still going up each time. Uh, so we're going to run it for three more cycles. So far, we've seen a battery that wouldn't make it to 1200 milliamps discharge even after multiple cycles. That's bad, and it needs to be replaced. We've seen a battery that made it to 5,000 milliamps discharge on the second cycle, and on the third cycle made it to over 5,000, and even capacitied out at 7,500 on the charge cycle. That's uh, one of the best scenarios that you can have, and it is a really strong battery. And then we've gotten to the third one, number 16. And that one's been run multiple cycles, and each time it seems to get a little bit stronger. That's what I usually run into when doing these packs. So the numbers that I got on this one were 4893, 4896, and 5008. That means that one's good, and it can be reused. It's been refurbished. But it never made it to the 7500 milliamp on the charge. It never capacitated out. In fact, the number on this one's charge after the uh, last cycle was 6821 but I'm still going to use it in this pack it's still got plenty of power and plenty of life left in it according to this charger so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run the rest of these and then I'm going to show you the next step. finish this process on the rest of these batteries and what I've ended up with is 14 bad batteries overall they start right here and end right Some here. Some of them made it close but didn't quite pass the bar this one in particular 4977 was my discharge number I ran this one 20 times and still didn't get the results that I wanted. So I'm gonna replace it as well. This is the point in the process where you go ahead and you would buy your new battery somewhere, you either refurbished off of eBay, something like that, and you'd get them in so that you could do this next step. I'm not gonna order any because I have some spares here that I was able to get enough of to replace the 14 bad ones in this pack. So when you have your batteries in hand, like I have my batteries in hand, this is the next step. And what we're gonna do is we'll look at these black bars and one end has a solid black piece that runs across here, a piece of metal. The opposite end of that, which is this end right here closest to the camera, is the end that we want to take off. And that'll allow us to slide all these batteries out. I found the easiest way to do this is to turn the battery pack up on its end and take all four of these screws out. All these look the same. I've got my batteries separated into a bad pile and a good pile. And you can see this metal bar that's in here that I was talking about. The reason you take the cap off the other end is because you can't get the batteries past this metal if you take the screws out of this if end. If you have your replacement batteries in hand, you're going to want to do a thing called balancing. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. Now all of these battery packs have a little divot on one side and a little nipple on the other side that lock into each other. When you'll notice when you took this apart that the negative from one battery pack was right next to the positive of the other battery pack so this one would go this opposite direction and they were back and forth like this for this balancing exercise we're not going to do that we're going to have them all facing the same direction so all the negatives will be on one side and all the positives will be on the other side whether you're stacking these in the same direction or even in the opposite directions when you're putting it back together you'll be able to feel the little nipples lock in with those dimples and you'll know that the pack is seated correctly. Now you can see they're all lined up in the same direction. All these vent tubes are on the same side. We're gonna put our end cap back on for now. When you're tightening these up, 
you don't want to go all the way down one. What you want to do is you want to work your way around. And that way it pulls it everything down evenly. You don't want to put too much stress on one part of the battery. And I'm not really torquing these down at all. I'm just going to do it till they stop. I got some pretty good numbers out of some of them. I got some 54s, some 5800, some 5500s. But my pack's only going to be as strong as the weakest cell. And that one is uh, 5008. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. But the main goal is just to get all these positives tied to each other. And all these negatives tied to each other. If you had the same issues that I do, your bus bars probably looked really bad. And these uh, are all corroded. So it's a good thing to go ahead and just buy new ones. I recommend getting some that are nickel plated. And if you have two sets of these, you know, your new ones and your old ones, you can just put these right here on the nuts over top of each other. And you can take and do the pack with two sets of these. I don't do that. I use a piece of welding wire. And I lay it across, but either way, you still have to put the nuts on. All right, you can see here that I got that piece of wire going all the way down on those nuts, and I've tightened the nuts down onto it with just a little bit of torque, just enough that it's got good contact. Well, all of these cells are now balanced. It's been sitting like this for 48 hours. So now we can take these uh, nuts off and the wires off, and we have to pull the pack back apart. And that way we can take and put the cells back in the proper orientation. Now when I do that, I'm going to take the highest cells, the ones with the highest values, and I'm going to put them in the center where all those bad ones were. And then the ones that were lower, I'm going to put on the ends. Let's go ahead and get back, back and on. forth again. They can be put back in the series configuration. And my strongest ones in the middle, the next thing I'm going to do is put my end cap back on. Now what you want to do is you want to torque these down a good amount. I got her put back together. Ready to put back into the high voltage assembly and then back into the car so we can get many, many more pleasurable miles out of it. But you just seen every step that you need to take to do this yourself, and it's definitely a job you can do yourself. All you need is some hand tools and one of those CQ3 battery chargers or another charger that has the same settings. Follow my settings, follow my steps, and you'll be enjoying mileage out of these Priuses just like I do. If you found the video educational or even entertaining, please click the like button, the thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It'll help it grow. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, Greg Festo out.